Um, with this recording, it will also be posted on the coaches resource page and uh, the recording and the slide deck will be sent out tomorrow over email to everybody on the distribution list. Um, I have heard back from a few uh, coaches or area directors about people that were originally missed. So those individuals have been added to that list. So thank you for saying something and uh, looking out for each other. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in chat and we will get to them. Um, I expect that we'll have plenty of time for questions and answers at the end, um, along with being addressed during. With that being said, we do have a webinar for athletics uh, that is happening right after this one at 730. So we do need to wrap everything up by 725. Um, just to keep that on schedule too. All right, so starting off with the agenda, welcome everybody. I look forward to working with you again this year. I'm excited for all the qualifiers that we have booked already, which we'll talk about later on here too. I um, appreciate you all being on top of that and providing as many details as you can at this time, just so we can make other counties aware of the opportunities that are coming up. I uh, will Go over everybody's favorite part, the forums and deadlines. Uh, we'll go over some brief summer games information. Again, this is not to talk about summer games, this is to talk about the season, but some of the season, of course, pertains to summer games. Uh, we'll talk about the coaches training opportunity, um, the coaches resource page, and where you can find a lot of important information uh, related to the season along with the summer games. We'll go over which events will be offered, um, how to kind of figure out which athletes should be in what events. We'll go over the list of qualifiers that I have at this time, and then we, of course, will leave it uh, up for discussion uh, or questions at the conclusion of this webinar. Um, and a note at the bottom here, we won't be going through this portion of it, but when we get to it, uh, I'll kind of click through it as we're going through our questions at the end. But there is a big resource section um, that I encourage you to use as a reference, which includes uh, resource material for coaches, uh, medical forms, a bunch of different things that are very beneficial for you to look through, uh, but not beneficial for me to uh, discuss in detail on the webinar here tonight. All right, to start off the season here, as a reminder here with COVID, uh, there's no restrictions at this time related to COVID within Maryland. Um, we will be following the local restrictions of the state and local jurisdiction though, as we proceed throughout the season, not just in bocce, but any other sport uh, or event related to Special Olympics Maryland. An important reminder, no athlete or volunteer may participate in any manner within the program without a valid and current medical form, CDW, or volunteer application. There are zero exceptions to this policy. Um, it will provide a little bit clearer details for those that hasn't clicked completely yet uh, here shortly, but that pertains to anybody whatsoever um, before they begin training. Please make sure you work with your area leadership. Uh, keep your area directors um, in the loop with where your athletes stand. If any athlete or partner or anybody needs forms to be um, updated, please make sure that they are done so um, and make sure that they go through the entire season. Um, for athletes to be eligible, they need to be completed through um, Sunday, June 25th, which is the Sunday of our summer games, which will then conclude the year for us. So please work with them, make sure we're all set there, and then we can enjoy the fun part, uh, which we all love, which is the season of bocce. So what is required for each person here in front of you? Uh, we won't go through this word by word, but you can see where, uh, depending on which credential you have, uh, or maybe where you would like to be, uh, what needs to be completed here. So I would encourage as many people to get as far uh, to that right as they can for the sake of being able to fill in or help out wherever possible for their county. Uh, say your assistant coach cannot attend, um, your sport volunteer or ex-sport volunteer now has those credentials um, that the assistant coach would have to step into that role. So no matter what role you have, though, please make sure your CDW is in. Um, I believe at this point, all of those, uh, unless there are new athletes or partners or coaches, that that has been completed. Um, but this is a great reference point if you're wondering where you stand or how you need to get to the next level. So we talked about registration earlier. So the standard forms noted on the previous slides must be submitted to HQ. That does not matter whether or not you will be um, competing at summer games or not. That is something those forms need to be in, even if you are only training and practicing within your county. 
So no matter how far uh, you would like to proceed throughout the season competition wise, those forms need to be in. So they are a requirement for any involvement with Special Olympics. So just, to, just, just to clarify again, HQ is just the Special Olympics Maryland headquarters, the state office. Uh, but again, as Ryan said, work with your area leadership to make sure that they are submitted through the uh, county programs and the management teams there. Yes, thank you, Steve. All right, so the deadlines, again, you don't need to jot everything down here as this will be sent out, but this might be something uh, you wanna write down and stick on your calendar just so it is not missed. Um, and then problems occur afterwards. So your training registration deadline is four days or three days before my birthday on April 21st. Uh, that's when all your athletes that are training, unified partners, coaches, volunteers need to be entered into GMS. Anybody submitted after this date may participate in training, but is not eligible for the state competition. So again, you see that asterisk there. Please have that to your area leadership one to two weeks before, which will allow them time to process it um, and get everything over to us. Ahead of the game is always better. So this is the deadline, but please uh, think a little bit farther out if you can. Your last date for missing forms to be submitted is uh, May 5th. So that's when everybody depending on who you are, uh, has their um, paperwork in and again valid through June 25th, which is the final day of our summer games and the conclusion of our official uh, 23 bocce season. The competition registration deadline will be June 1st. Uh, that's when all your delegation members, your rosters, and all that fun stuff needs to be into me so that we can um, begin divisioning and kind of laying out the schedule for you so you can have it as far out as advanced as uh, possible on my end. Um, but it just allows us to make sure everybody is still good to go um, and proceed after that point. All right, so some additional registration notes here. Only people that meet all the requirements to be a coach will be credentialized at summer games. Um, I know that we've had some confusion with that in the past. Um, if I see um, somebody has entered in in GMS but is not up to that status, they will be changed. So this includes up-to-date coach certification, valid through again, June 25th. That is the date of this webinar, um, in addition to the standard forms. So a coach must have completed CSOA. Um, there are opportunities for that to sign up for. Um, that's also located on the coach's resource page if you need to complete that. We need to have the um, SOMD approved course specific to the sport um, up to date. Um, we'll talk about that, about what opportunity currently at the moment is being offered if you need to update your certification there. And the individuals who did not meet these requirements can register as a volunteer or sport volunteer within their delegation, but they will not uh, receive that coach certification. If you are curious about where you stand, um, the great place to check, which is updated very often, is on the coach's resource page. Um, that link below will take you right to where you can find your status, um, which I would encourage you to check out. So for summer games, to put this on your calendar, if you don't have it already, June 23rd to the 25th. This is not Father's Day weekend this year. I'll be back at Towson University on the beautiful Burdick Field. Uh, we will be using those inflatable courts again that we used the last two years. Um, we found that there are way more pros than cons, uh, if any cons to those. Um, so we are going back with those. Opening ceremony will be on the evening of Friday, June 23rd. Cheerleading and swimming competition will be on Friday, June 23rd also. And then some other sports, athletics, bocce, softball, and swimming. The competition will be on Saturday and Sunday. As a reminder, softball will be at Kiwanis Wallace Park in Ellicott City, um, in case anybody asks you about that. So the events that are being offered, uh, which should help you also during your training year, singles, that'll be traditional only. Uh, doubles will be traditionally unified. And then we do also off offer the four-person team traditionally unified um, if you have any teams that would like to take advantage of that, please let me know no later than May 19th. Um, we haven't had any within at least the past year. Um, I don't know about past that. My memory does not work that well. Um, but again, if you have any teams, just let me know in advance for planning purposes, um, as that will kind of change the setup and planning for summer games. 
At the bottom here, you'll see that uh, singles again will be offered on Saturday and then doubles will be conducted on Sunday, June 25th. Do we have any general questions about summer games before we move on here? I have not seen any in the chat, Ryan. All right, so thank you again to all of you for uh, getting your qualifiers in here. That's very helpful. Um, again, really appreciate it. So here in front of you is a list of what we currently have. Um, Carol at the bottom is still possible. Um, I heard some talk about that, so please don't take that um, to be certain at this point. But all those others um, are good to go. The sanction forms that I have received are up on the coaches resource page also, which will provide you more information, exact times, um, what events are being offered for those particular events, um, et cetera. If you have not sent me your sanction form uh, for your mandated one hosted qualifier, please let me know. Um, I mean, not please let me know. Please send that along once you have that completed, or even if you just have tentative details at this time, that could be very helpful. If you have any issues or need support or extra support, I'm here to help you however I can with that. Um, just please reach out to me and we can make that happen together. So our in-person coaches training brought to you by our great coach, uh, also management member is Rennie Springle. That will be on April 1st at the Margaret Senior Center is what I call it because I do not try to pronounce that other word. Um, that's going to be tentatively at 1130 a.m. That will be before Montgomery County's bocce practice. Uh, we're finalizing the details at this time for that, and that will be also sent out with you uh, in the email tomorrow, along with the slide deck and recording and more details about this coach's training. So if you need your coach's training, please take uh, up this opportunity. And we look forward to seeing as many people as we can um, at this training. All right, so before we get into the Spachi rule highlights, um, this is not supposed to be a coach's training. I'm going to go over some very general information related to Bocce. Um, If you have any questions, I'm happy to address them, but we can definitely go into this more detail um, at the coach's training or any time you would like. So our court size, um, no matter what size court or not size court, what kind of court you're using, it will be 60 feet long uh, by 12 feet wide. And then you will have your two foul lines, 10 feet in, and then you have a middle court line. Half of 60 is 30. Um, so there's two sets of four bocce balls. One set is red and the other one is green. There is a little white or yellow ball and that is called the polina. The length of a game, um, either it ends with a point total um, or by time. So if either opponent reaches 12 points for singles and doubles, um, and then 16 points for doubles and unified doubles. Um, we also have a time limit that we use at summer games. Um, that is, I don't remember the time off the top of my head, um, but typically it's, it's going to either be by that time runs up and or those total points have been reached. Um, one thing in the past at summer games, not to go into this too much, but it's something I want to fix. We will be waiting until each game is to be, is completed before proceeding to the next game at summer games. I know that we try to keep everybody moving um, and complete the day successfully in a timely manner, um, but we feel like as a team, we're kind of um, not giving everybody the best competition experience while trying to plug people in um, while other games are finishing up with the clock being different, et cetera. So we will wait for the conclusion of all games and then cycle our next teams in. So for the sequence of play, one side has a set of four green balls. The other side has those four red. All eight balls are rolled by the end of the frame. So each player stands behind, not on the foul line, when delivering the bocce ball. And after all those eight are rolled, that is the conclusion of that frame. So to start off a game, a coin flip um, determines which side rolls. Um, they get to pick which color they want, and then we proceed from there. Um, there has been a question in the past, I know from at least two different counties, that I think the other team gets to then pick what side they roll from. Uh, this is not football. Um, I think 
that that is not something that gets to be determined. Um, please just pick your side before the coin toss and then proceed to your side. Um, but it does determine through that coin toss which team gets to roll uh, the Polina first there. A player has three attempts to roll or toss the Polina past the midcourt line and have it stop before the foul line. If after those three times are up and that does not happen, the other team uh, gets the chance to roll a Polina. I am corrected. If that player is unsuccessful, the official will place the Polina in the center on the opposite end of the foul line. My apologies. At no time does a side lose if it's earned the Polina advantage or being able to deliver the ball first. The athlete or team winning the coin toss with the Polina advantage must also deliver the first ball. So you win the coin toss, you pick uh, the color ball, you go to your side, that Polina is rolled, and then that same team delivers their first ball. So after the first player, it must be the same player delivers the Polina, the first ball is rolled. After that, the second ball is delivered. Whatever side has the color closest to Polina steps aside and allows the other side to roll a ball until one gets closest to the Polina. So a good way to have our volunteers say it, and we have a few different things uh, we like our volunteers to do, but one of them is be consistent with the wording that they use. So green ball is closer, red rolls. So consistency for our athletes is always huge. And if we could have that happen during the season also, it won't be confusing at all whatsoever for them at uh, summer games. So that continues to happen until both sides deliver all four of their balls, which again concludes the frame. Following the official's determination of the points earned, players walk to the opposite side of the court and start the next frame. Uh, the only exception to that would be with half court, where the athletes stay on one side and constantly throw in one direction. The one athlete or team that is awarded points is presented with the plenum to roll out to begin the next frame. Scoring. After both sides roll all the balls, the frame is completed and the court official awards the points. There's only ever one team that can receive points in a frame. You can receive more than one point. Um, but there's only ever one team receiving points during a frame. In the cases where two opposing balls are positioned close, obviously official needs to pull out uh, the tape measure and figure out which one is closer, meaning in, um, and that will determine who wins that frame. If there's any question about what is closer, um, please have your officials measure it. Uh, we want to be consistent and uh, honor the sport the best we can with uh, accuracy. So please be a good example to your athletes. Uh, we stress that to our volunteers during summer games uh, when it's as hot as it can possibly be on that turf, that that's an extremely important part um, to honor the sport. So I was gonna remove the box and give you a little test about which team was in, how many, how many uh, points they earned, but it was too simple in my opinion. So as an example, the red team scores two points. Their balls are closer than the next green ball. So the red team also rolls a Polina to be in the next frame because they were in. Legal throws. Um, typically, our athletes do a great job with this. Um, it's usually corrected at the beginning of the season if there's any issues, but please make sure the ball is rolled below the waist. The release point must be below one's belt or below. So these images are great examples. You can kneel down as much as you would like. Um, just please make sure no matter what position you are in that the athlete's delivering the ball below the waist. So a ramp is approved. Uh, Zach and I are currently talking um, because we're aware that ramps, when we find them, are extremely expensive, meaning close to $500. Uh, we're looking for providers to kind of figure out how we can simplify um, or make that price a little bit less and then order a few of these. Um, if you do have athletes in need of ramps, please let me know and we'll do everything we can, um, whether it be possibly get a grant for that in the future, or find a supplier that can provide those to us for a reasonable price. Uh, we'll do everything we can in our power to provide you those. 
Also, I will take this as a chance to say, if you know of any providers, uh, please inform myself so that we can get that word out to others on where the best place to purchase those would be. So we talked about legal throwing below the waist. Also, please be aware of that foul line. Uh, typically, I know many of you use cones, ear qualifiers, which work great. Uh, we use spray chalk at summer games. Um, it's very hard to miss, well, unless there's other lines on the field, but that's another topic uh, that we'll address this year. Um, but again, please make sure your athletes are behind the foul line. If they're stepping up, um, ready to toss the ball, please just say something to them and reinforce that, that they need to double check where they are before the throw occurs. And on this also coming to mind, they can have their arm over the line. That's perfectly fine. It is the location of their feet to clarify. So a player is allowed to hit the sideboards. That's part of the strategy of the game. There's nothing wrong with that. Those are considered legal throws. If a ball is rolled out and strikes another ball and the ball leaves the court, the play stands, that ball left outside of the court remains there for the remainder of the frame. That is not placed anywhere else on the court. If the Polina is hit out of the court, then the frame will be declared dead and we start over from the beginning. If a bocce ball is hit out of the court, like we said, it's dead and it's not placed back in the court. Measuring. <laughs> I think this is where uh, probably 25% of the frustration comes um, during summer games. And I think it starts during the season being consistent and training our volunteers the best we can about this. So we measure from the front of the bocce ball to the center of the polina. So the official should take the zero end of the measuring tape. Some measuring tapes have a little piece or 10 centimeters before that end to clarify it's a zero end of the measuring tape and place it on the side and in the center of the bocce ball. Then you take the measuring tape over the top of the polina, and that is how you calculate uh, every single time uh, the distance between each the ball and the polina. So we will reinforce that with our volunteers at summer games. I encourage you to do that the same uh, during the season and also train your athletes on how to do that so they can assist during uh, your practices. Um, so they're aware of how to do it, and then they can also tell us and our volunteers when it's done incorrectly so we can address it so we can proceed accordingly there. Any questions with measurements? I know it's very simple, but it does take up some of our time. Nothing's come in through chat. Okay. I saw a few nods. People know what I'm talking about. All right, so we talked about half courts very briefly. Um, it is a 30-foot uh, court. Um, so half court competition is intended for lower ability athletes. I think we had two last year at summer games for what I can remember. Um, the Polina, the lower ability athletes who cannot toss the bocce or play a ball 20 feet or more. So this is determined um, at your qualifier um, or also if they have a score of 700 or higher. This is a singles event only, again, traditional. Um, Doubles four-person team here, the note, the team competition will be offered exclusively on the 60-foot court. So please, just like uh, if you have any ramp bowlers, um, please let me know in advance when you can, if you have any half-court players, so our team can uh, prepare accordingly for those. Like we talked about, it'll be on a 30-foot court. The width stays the same. Um, the sideline should be along the entire length of the court. The end line will be the regulation 30 foot line or the half court line and be marked with chalk or marking paint. Um, this is always put at the end of our courts um, at summer games for the sake of lining it correctly and not um, incorrectly lining the other courts when everything is laid out there. Um, but if you have any half court or need more instruction on it, kind of the rules of this. Our rules guide does lay out in good detail how this game's operated. But again, it's pretty much the exact same as any other. Uh, you're just playing in one direction for the whole time. And it's for athletes that have issues or struggle to um, get that ball to a full distant court. Oh yeah, the Polina can end up anywhere on the half court. 
Um, there's no center line. Um, and athletes always throw from one direction. So should the three attempt rule need to be employed in half court, then the plane will be placed at the 20 foot from the throwing line in the center of the court. Half court game will be played according to the rules, except where noted above. Um, there's very cha little changes that we incorporate um, pertaining to these half court games um, that are different than the rules. So if it's in the rules, you are good to go on that aspect. They're a great reference guide. Uh, for all the events that we offer for bocce. Uniform requirements. Please make sure your athletes are attending each practice and competition, especially in the proper uh, uniform. That can determine uh, how they feel during the day. So please make sure they're practicing and what they're going to be competing in. So that should be long pants or shorts. Golf or tennis shirts are perfectly fine. Jeans, running shorts, or short shorts are not permitted. Please make sure your athletes have athletic shoes on, uh, no sandals, flip-flop type of deals. Uh, hats are permissible. Um, we just need to make sure that they don't include a sponsorship or corporate logos, please. A collar shirt is required for competition. Uh, that goes back many years, so that should not be any different. But please, again, make sure that they're starting this season off on the right foot, wearing the proper uh, uniform requirements for the sport of bocce. So here's our coach's resource page. Uh, the bocce page was down for a decent amount of time. It is up and running as of a few days ago here. Uh, with that being said, now all our opportunities, as we talked about, are posted on that page. And please reference those um, before you just mark off that you're definitely going to one or would like to go to one, as they have a ton of details uh, that may sway you in one direction or another. Um, also on the COVID, our main resource page, talk about COVID uh, certification status, as we said, great reference point, um, links to applications, forms, and certifications. If you can't find it for whatever reason, shoot me an email or give me a call. You know, I'd be happy to help you. Um, also on that page is coach education development pages. Um, it has those main links to the coach resource page, also trainings um, in multiple different sports. Again, please go to those pages first. But if you cannot find what you're looking for, I'm your next stop. So I know we went through that relatively quickly. I am not a bocce specialist. I'm grateful to have a great team that is a specialist in this sport. Um, we will go into more detail, as I said, during the coaches trainings. This is just to get you all on the same page um, as we kick off this season. Again, as we talked about this additional resource section here, we won't go through all of this, but it's a great place um, to check out a bunch of different sources that have to do with, oh, I haven't said thank you yet. Um, reminders about certifications, how to deal with uh, incidents that may occur. Um, again, the development progress. So please um, keep this on hand, just in case you would like to refer to it. Um, but again, that can be something you can review at your own leisure. At this time, we will open it up for questions, um, as I hope that we will have some. Right, there was one, and I had to step out to take a phone call. Sure. Briefly, and it may have been in these slides, I can't remember, but um, the requirements for qualifiers, like two, uh, one in-house and one multi or whatever, if you could address that. And it may sure. have been addressed, I just might have missed it. No, I did not. And thank you for bringing that up. Uh, each county does need to host one qualifier, um, two in total. One can be in-house, but one uh, sanctioned qualifier that includes outside counties. So I think there's only two or three that I have not heard from that I believe are offering bocce this season. So without saying any names, please make sure that uh, you provide me with that sanctioned form. And again, if you need help whatsoever, I can help you to the greatest extent that I can. Um, and I'll ensure that I can be there and assist you with uh, whatever may be a struggle or a blocker at the moment here. So just to clarify, each county has to do a sanctioned qualifier or can't be just an in-house qualifier? That's correct. So we want to kind of there's a ton of counties that each year offer it to a bunch of counties. Um, and we would like to be able to return that favor. And it also increases 
um, opportunities for our athletes to travel, compete against each other um, outside of the typical practice or in-house competition. So that's correct. But again, if you need support, um, no matter what level of assistance that is, please let me know and we can make it happen together. Uh, one thing to clarify with that also, um, uh, when we're talking about a qualifier here, we're not saying you have to hold a spring games with a huge opening ceremonies and lunch and awards and so on down the line. Um, we have a, do a thing that we call the all comers model. I mean, it's a little misleading, but it's based on a kind of a history and track of, uh, it's just a no frills competition. You show up, yeah, you might have uh, one minute opening comments just to make sure people know where the bathroom is uh, and other stuff and you compete. So it can be a very simple uh, competition as long as you've got your your properly trained officials there uh, and you've divisioned them and such. No need for awards, no need for lunch, no need for anything. Uh, and it's usually a lot of times the those extra frills are what takes so long uh, and so much preparation. Um, so um, don't don't be intimidated. And again, Ryan's offer of assistance uh, can be very valuable too. I'm sorry. I just wanted, we're kind of arguing here about what we heard. Um, Mike and I are together, but what we heard is that we, every county has to host a qualifier, right? That includes outside. That includes outside folks, right? That's correct. That is open to other counties outside of just your own. Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure I heard that correctly. Yes. That's and uh, I'm I'm sorry, but you mentioned that I know I have not been in touch with you, Ryan, from Hartford County, because I didn't know this information. How would I have known this before tonight? Maybe you have not. I did not send out anything that was stated. Okay. This was meant to be at the beginning of the season, so we still have time to do all that. If you need help with the facility or anything else, I'm happy to help you with that and get you started. Okay. Well, one other note also, I'm sorry, with the um, with that whole all comers model, but to again, make it easy, what a lot of areas do is they may be, uh, who are hosting is they may be expand their regular practice time and invite a couple other counties to come and, and just play some matches there. So uh, you may already have the facility and already booked, um, you know, and uh, again, making it as simple as possible. Speaking of as simple as possible, there was, so at the bottom of each sanction form, I think you all know, there is uh, the question about any equipment from SOMD, is that needed? Somebody requested a full cauldron and torch. So all of that is not necessarily needed uh, at these uh, qualifiers. But again, please provide me your needs at the bottom of that form. If that's courts that you need, uh, we can work with you and make whatever happen there. So please just inform me and I'm here to help you. I will be there. If there's a double over something on a date, I will uh, communicate to the one person that I cannot uh, be at their qualifier and will proceed nor, or I'll have somebody cover if need be in that situation. Is the expectation that you'll be inviting an entire other county to this? So on the sanction form, it kind of shows what your capacity is. So that kind of depends on what venue you're operating out of. Um, so there is kind of a limit, I know for some of them, but it says on that form, uh, expected number of participants. So please include how many your county has um, planning on to come, but also um, how many you are opening it up to. So that may not be able to accommodate a full other county, and that's perfectly fine. The point here is just to have your athletes competing with people from other counties um, for a qualifier. Okay. Uh, Carolyn asked um, above here, uh, will there be any other coaches certifications? So for each sport, I do everything I can to offer at least two. Um, so the one will be in person. The other one will most likely be virtual. That is not set at this point. Um, I don't want to burn uh, Rennie into the ground here, though he does a phenomenal job. So I will be looking for another presenter, most likely to do that virtual uh, training, but I would like to offer two. Hope that helps, Carolyn. I don't find it fair to say here's our one option. So we do what we can to have two to three each year for each sport. 
And um, a question came in about housing. So yes, we will have limited housing at housing campus for summer games, um, but you'll be needing, everyone will need to work with your county leadership to determine who will be staying on campus. Um, so just work with your uh, area leadership on that. Other questions? I haven't seen any any additional ones through chat. Okay. Who has started their season so far? Anybody? A lot of head shaking. That's good. <laughs> we tried to do these a little bit earlier uh, just so we can get this information out to you before you begin. Okay. All right. There's no reason to sit on here. I really appreciate you all joining tonight. Um, I know that you'll have questions throughout the season, which is perfectly fine. Please reach out to me. Um, again, this recording and the slide deck will be distributed to tomorrow, along with on the coaches resource page. Um, again, thank you for those who let me know about your other team members that were not on the original distribution list. They are now. Um, so I'd be amazed if any of you can tell me that again, uh, twice that they were missed. So Thank you all very much. I look forward to working with all of you again this year. Um, please tell me how I can help you with your qualifier. I will be going to one every weekend between athletics and bocce um, now until summer games. So um, I'd be happy to be at yours and assist you whatever way I can. If that's volunteer training, um, if that's helping you scope out a facility that will work best and accommodate um, as many athletes reasonably that we can, please let me know and I'll be happy to work with you. All right. Thank you all again. Uh, let's have a great rest of our week and uh, talk to you soon. Good night. Thank, thank you. Good night. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley.